Hello, we are from Group 3 would like to present about Mission 4 related topics which are Amplitude, Angle and Radio Digital Modulation. I'm Tanjin and I will explain to you about Amplitude Modulation. What is Amplitude Modulation? Amplitude Modulation is the process in which the amplitude of the carrier signal changes according to the information signal. The purpose of amplitude modulation is to reduce noise, allow multiplexing process in which several information can be sent to one channel simultaneously to simplify the transmission process and to shift the information spectrum from low frequency to high frequency band. There are two signals involved in amplitude modulation which are modulating signal and carrier signal. Modulating signal, also known as information signal or message signal, can be audio signal or video signal. Meanwhile, carrier signal is a carrier wave that is modulated with information signal. The frequency of the carrier signal should be greater than the frequency of modulating signal. In amplitude modulation, modulating signal and carrier signal will pass through a modulator, then the final output will be a modulated signal. A modulated signal can be converted back to the original information signal through a process known as demodulation. In the demodulation process, a modulated signal will enter a demodulator that will demodulate the modulated signal back to the information signal. The example of the demodulator is envelope detector. After the demodulation, the output will be a modulating signal. Moving on to angle modulation, which consists of two types, frequency modulation and phase modulation. Frequency modulation FM is the modulation process in which the instantaneous angular frequency of the carrier signal is changed according to the modulating signal, while phase modulation PM can be defined as the modulation process in which the phase of the carrier signal is changed according to the modulating signal. How does frequency and phase modulation is related in angle modulation. From this block diagram at the generator, modulating signal must pass through integration and PM modulator to get FM signal. Contrastingly, modulating signal must pass through differentiation and FM modulator to get PM signal to be transmitted. At the receiver, both modulated signals will go through the same block system in backwards to get back the modulating signal. These are the resulting graphs of the signal. With FM signal, the frequency increase at the highest peak of modulating signal, while in PM, the frequency increase as the oscillation finish a cycle. Next, next, we will learn on radio digital modulation. To start off, let's get to know baud rate and bit rate. The baud rate refers to the total number of signal units transmitted in one second. Meanwhile, the bit rate refers to the total binary digits transmitted in one unit time. Both of these are important variables in this topic. Okay, so now I will explain about the radio modulation technique, which is amplitude shifting, frequency shifting, and phase shifting. Okay, so for amplitude shifting, ASK actually is a digital modulation technique that conveys the data by varying the amplitude of a carrier wave. Okay, so as you can see, there is a carrier signal. Uh, okay, and at times with the information signal. Okay, information signal, the one is means high amplitude, and zero is means low amplitude. Okay, so after times, Carrying the time information signal, it will form the ASK for the final waveform. So, as you can see, for the height one, you get to produce continuous waveform, but for zero, the low, and you will form a horizontal, horizontal line only. La. So, okay, for frequency shifting, FSK. Okay, so for this, it's a modulation technique that using the uh, varying the frequency of the carrier signal. And generation of S FSK waveform is by summing up the two ASK waveforms. By summing amplifier. Okay, so as we can see here, got two carrier signal and the two information signal. Okay, so for one, uh, first one is one zero one, but for second one, actually it's the inverse of first one lah. So become zero one zero. Okay, after we get the ASK one, ASK two, we combine together and get the FSK result lah. Ah, uh, it's the waveform. Phase shift key PSK is a digital modulation where the carrier signal phase change from 0 degree to 180 degree or from negative 0 degree to 90 degree. You can see from the graph here, whenever there is a logic 1 change to logic 0 or 0 to 1, there is a phase change. 
To generate a PSK signal, an input signal is converted from unipolar to bipolar using a level converter. Then, a balance modulator combines the bipolar input signal and the carrier signal into PSK signal. To modulate or receive a PSK signal, the PSK signal is multiplied with a carrier signal and then they will pass through a band pass filter. The detector will detect the signal and convert it back to the original signal. For multi-level shift keying, there are more than one bits can be represented by a symbol. A symbol is a final signal representation before transmitted through physical medium such as amplitude, frequency, and phase. Two power of n symbols are required for n bits. For example, two power of two or four symbols are needed to represent four combinations 00, 01, 10, and 11 that use two bits. This multi-shift keying is applicable to ASK, FSK and PSK and it is proven to be useful in PSK such as QPSK. In quadrature phase shift keying or QPSK, one symbol represents two bits. Four symbols can be represented by a combination of two bits 00, 01, 10 and 11. The phase will vary from 45, 135, 225 and 315 degree. While for binary PSK, the phase change from 0 to 180 degree only. And the figure shown the mapping of QPSK signal using GUI code. For 11, it represents 45, 01 represents 135, 00 represents 225, and 10 represents 315 degree. Let's proceed to the recent advancement in communication field. What is 5G and IoT? 5G stands for 5th generation and the latest standard for cellular networks, offering significant improvement in terms of speed, latency, and network capacity. It follows the previous generations like 4G and 3G that are offering significant improvement in terms of speed, latency, and network capacity, while IoT stands for the Internet of Things, which refer to a network of physical objects, things that are embedded with sensors, software, and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging data with other devices and systems over the internet. The benefits of 5G 5G networks offer substantially high speeds compared to 4G and 3G, potentially up to 10 Gbps. This means faster download and upload speeds, allowing for quicker access to that data and streaming of high definition content. Next, low latency which refers to the time it takes for a signal to travel from the, the source to the receiver and back. This reduces latency and enables more real-time and interactive applications such as gaming and augmented reality. 5G also can handle a significantly higher number of connected devices, and 5G networks have a greater bandwidth, allowing them to accommodate more data transmission. This is particularly beneficial in crowded areas and at large events where many people use the network simultaneously. Last but not least, 5G networks are designed to be more energy efficient than the previous generation, which is increasingly important in a world focused on sustainability. Move on to the benefits of IoT. Firstly, interconnectivity. IoT devices can connect to the internet and sometimes to each other, allowing for the transfer and receive of data. Next, data collection and analysis. IoT devices often have the sensors that collect data. This data can be analyzed to monitor system, improve performance, or predict maintenance needs. Okay. Next is automation and control. Many IoT devices can be automated or controlled remotely, allowing for efficient and flexibility operation. Lastly, integration with other systems. IoT devices are often designed to integrate seamlessly with existing internet infrastructure and data networks, enhancing the overall functionality and utility of the internet. There are several misconceptions about 5G technology, especially regarding its impact on health, safety, and other aspects. The first common myth is potential health risks, impact on public, public health. A significant misconception about 5G is its potential impact on public health. The fear often centers around the belief that 5G technology might be harmful due to increased exposure of radio frequency radiation. However, current evidence suggests that exposure levels from 5G base stations will remain well below international safety guidelines and no adverse health effects are associated with radio frequency exposure at these levels. The other common myth is misunderstanding of 5G purposes. There's a misconception that 5G is just a faster version of 4G. However, in reality, while 5G does offer significant speed increase, its transformative potential lies in much more than just the speed. 5G will revol revolutionize various sectors by enabling lower latency, high capacity, connectivity, crucial for applications like augmented reality, robotics, and the Internet of Things. It not 
just about fastest smartphones. It's about the broader range of technology advancements and applications. That's all from us. Thank you for watching.